just want to do a quick review on the eMove Cruiser scooter. This is the 1000 watt version. I bought this in October or November. It's been broken about half the time I've owned it. Just right now replacing it on its uh, sixth controller. Uh, first one lasted five days. I was going up a hill and it just stopped. Had to get rescued. Um, from there it was about two months before it was finally working again. They sent me a new controller which I replaced dead on arrival, sent me another new controller dead on arrival, had me send the scooter back, replaced it there, uh, worked kind of but would cut out after a short time after about 20 minutes of riding. Um, and then they sent another one that finally worked and then this one that I just replaced Lasted a couple months, but finally did overheat or otherwise fail uh, and had to walk it back the last mile. Um, so, if you're comfortable with uh, replacing these kind of things, this cost $70 this time. The warranty department told me I'm, they're no longer going to help me, even though I've only had this scooter for six months and it's a year warranty. They were very helpful in all the help they did give me but they told me I am cut off now. So a uh, scooter does have 300 miles on it. That's about 50 miles per controller. So if you add in $70 plus whatever delay and install and dead and arrivals you may get per 50 miles, that's what it's costing me on average. Uh, otherwise, scooter's pretty good. Um, the suspension is nothing fancy, but it hasn't failed. Um, Feels kind of like it's clunking as you go along, but no issues. I uh, haven't had... I like the tires. They're real tires. I did have a staple in this one, which I patched. I think that's right there. And that's held perfectly well. I did slime them. Um, but do like that over other models. The folding mechanism is really nice, and the fold-on handlebars are really nice. I did get some aftermarket ones that... Uh, widen the grip a little bit. I like that. Um, battery life is awesome. The cost is pretty pretty good compared to, you know, the rest of the market. Uh, I do wish I would have got a dual motor like the Varley Eagle One, because if you're relying on just the one controller here to to fail, or you know, if you're counting on that, you know, that's redundant in the other ones. Um, this will go right around 30, usually between like 27 and 31, depending on the charge it has or whatever. Um, battery is, it goes forever until the controller breaks. Um, and then some other things, it, it, it's definitely not waterproof. You can see I've, I've put silicon over all the edges here. Um, in, on the controller, which I've also had problems with that failing, like the thumb throttle, you can see wires and circuit boards in there, and there are several points of, of ingress um, throughout the scooter, and then they, as soon as you message them with the problem, they're going to say, did you write it in water? So this having a IP whatever rating is total crap. Um, the, that was the problem with the, the controller. I haven't had issues with water getting in there, but like I said, I did get the um, put the silicon on there. Other issues I've had, um, this light takes a while. You really need to tighten it up a lot, but after that, it, it does good, and it, it is a fairly good light. Um, I just put a handlebar light on there as well for some extra. Uh, the brake system, that was another thing. The front brake worked perfectly. I guess I can swing this around here. The rear brake, however, something else they wouldn't help me with. Uh, you can see the wear pattern there, how it's kind of to the outside and over the edge. Shiny out past here. So it was cutting through the ro through the discs. I think I have different ones on there now. But to the point where the, or through the pads, where the pads were just touching each other. So you would hit the brakes and it would just, the pads would press against each other and the disc would, would go freely. So it was unsafe. There is a bit of adjustment in here with loosening these up and, and whatnot. Um, no way I put it could get it on there correctly. 
they would not send me new brake pads or new brakes or anything. They just again said, that's too bad. So that was unfortunate. So I'm buying completely new brakes and discs. Um, I'm going to put those on here in a moment. Um, off the bat, the screws on this little thingy broke, uh, but they replaced that and that's been fine ever since. Um, and then this seat post, you can see mine's in a disarray. I didn't even mention this to them, but the seat post is awful. It's The whole thing is only this tall. And then, so it wobbles a lot. So you, you squeeze it down a lot. It has a little, one of those little bike lock things. And it just pinches in the metal uh, and it becomes even more wobbly. So I got a piece of um, aluminum exhaust pipe and did a very crass weld. I, I don't really have a good, aluminum MIG is tough. Uh, but it held on there for a while and finally broke off. But if they would just make that bit longer, uh, the seat is really sweet. Um, my commute with this was like nine and a half miles, so which which only took like 20 minutes or something, but it lowers your aerodynamic profile, it gets your center of gravity lower, which is good for braking, um, and it's just the weight off your feet. So that's, uh, that's a thing. Uh, another issue with this is none of the, the bolts come with any Loctite, and you can see here that top one is already about to fall out, and I have Loctite those. One is gone already with that hollow spot is right there um, and those have already been replaced like the first day I had that where it only lasted five days a lot of those were were just gone and they did replace some of them and again they were all very nice when they did help me but now I kind of have a $1,400 pile of junk we'll see how long this controller lasts and if I can stuff all that stuff in there again without breaking it again uh, all in all like I said I would have got a dual motor one probably the Violet Eagle one or one of the bigger, fancier ones. But generally, I think an e-bike is a, a better deal. I haven't had any problems with these little tires uh, going over bumps or anything like that, but it's just, why would you not have bigger ones? And then the whole thing is just an L, when it's when it's folded up, it's just a big L shape, so there's no rigidity, so the handlebars wobble a lot like that. Um, I'm history, or you know, background as a cyclist, so that's just, a strange feeling and then when you do hit the brakes you're, you're standing up your weight so far forward that it's it's just not pleasant it is kind of fun just you know standing up and scooting but I think that it's the motorized aspect so an e-bike and in a perfect world although I think they get expensive a dual motor e-bike would be really awesome um, they also have these lights on the side that only, oh, I have a key turned off, but the only, you can only control them from that, so, and they don't turn on or off with the key, so that's, that's just stupid. Um, otherwise, the layout is good, big, big platform, big battery, handlebars are all right, they fold down really nice, it folds in half like this pretty easy. It's good that they have a seat, but it definitely needs some work. Uh, the fenders seem to do fine, but it's not, you know, rated to be in the rain. And then most of the um, controller explosions, put one here, for fun. Most of those happen when going uphill. I weigh around 200 pounds. Uh, none of the hills has ever gone up or more than 10 degrees. Uh, they say the scooter is rated for 350 pound rider and capable of handling 20 degree hills. It's absolutely not. It barely will make it up a 10 degree hill. Uh, customer service people told me that that's like an exaggeration. It's not made for hills, even though they advertise that it's rated for that. And don't honor their warranty for problems related to that. Um, yeah. It's also just like, it's not fast. It doesn't, I mean, it does go 30, but it's not snapping your head back. It's not really fun to ride. Not in any exhilarating sense. I mean, you can go get going fast and whip around a corner or something, um, but doesn't do off road. I, I just I really couldn't recommend this scooter. It's been a huge pain for me since I got it, and and no longer covered by the warranty that it's technically under or capable of doing the things that it's advertised to do. Uh, that's all. Feel free to. Add any questions in the comments. Thank you.